Good evening. Welcome to Trojan Fieldhouse. I'm Steve Perry along with Carl East. We're here tonight for round two in the District 24 tournament for NAIA basketball. Tonight, the only two teams left from the west side of Tennessee, often known as the Tennessee Collegiate Athletic Conference, David Lipscomb Bisons and the Trevecca Trojans. The Trojans come in after a 15-1 season in the conference, and the Bisons enter the game after being 12-4 throughout the 16 regular season conference games. Both of these teams winning their opening games. Trevecca pulling off a 101-74 victory over Bethel, and Lipscomb came in after a close 100-98 win over Union. Now, tonight, in the ballgame, Carl, what do we have to look for? Well, I'm telling you, Steve, I'm nervous about this whole ball game, the whole situation. Two of the finest teams you'll ever see in this conference. I'm excited about what's going to happen in this gym in the next 40 minutes or so. Uh, both teams are very strong. They've had great workouts this week. I've talked with both coaches. They've had no changes in their game plan. They're confident with both, with both of their teams. They feel like they've had good workouts, and uh, they're going to stick with a, with a basic game plan that they've uh, been successful with all season long. Defensively, we'll see the Trojans mix up a man-to-man, -man, uh, full-court press, also a little bit of zone, but we'll probably see man-to-man -man more. Uh, as far as the Bisons are concerned, they'll mix it up as well. We'll see a lot of zone coming from the Bisons, though. Uh, the, the men that we need to keep an eye on are for David Lipscomb, of course, Philip Hutchinson, the freshman, outstanding ball player, big inside player, uh, as well as Anthony Jones. We need to keep an eye on him. Now, those two, Carl, are the all-District 24 players from the Bisons team also. That's, that's right, and these two players are... Uh, are, well, a backbone for this squad. Coach Don Meyer uh, has been very successful in coaching uh, the, his entire team, and uh, it looks good for the Bisons as, as far as coming into uh, Trojan Fieldhouse tonight. Now, we're talking about the Trojans. We're going to look, of course, at Avery Patton, uh, that all-time scoring, high scoring for the Trojans guard. And then, of course, we're going to talk uh, about Charles Brooks all night with his antics and, and fancy, uh, fancy ball playing Looking forward to a good guard action from the Trojans. Of course, we need to take a look at Mac Heberlin uh, tonight as well. He's been having a, a rough end of the season, but last week he had an excellent game against Bethel here in Trojan Fieldhouse, and uh, he might be warming up a little bit, so we might see a good game coming out of Mac Heberlin, the big man inside. The other big man, uh, Scott Heiser. We really need to see some good ball playing from Scott uh, for the Trojans aspect to see them uh, be successful offensively. Both teams are warming up. They're getting ready to go. Tension's really high in this gym. I wish that we could somehow transpose that tension onto the TV screen because not only is the temperature hot, but just the fever is hot within this gym, and it's going to be exciting. It's going to be a good ball game. I believe you, Carl. These teams have met three times this year already. The first game, the Bisons won it, 99-93, over at McQuitty Gym. Then uh, they came back here to Trevecca, and the Trojans won a 101-91 to contest. Back to McQuitty Gym for the last regular season game. The Trojans came up with a 108 to 100 victory. Uh, now, in that contest, the most recent, the Trojans were up by as many as uh, 18 points. The Bisons drew to within three, all on a full court press. What do we have in that vein tonight? Well, I'm telling you, I, the three point shot is something that's going to keep probably David Lipscomb in the ball game more so than Trebekah. They're known for taking a lot of shots. As a matter of fact, when they play Trevecca, they normally uh, take about 40 shots from the outside, um, you know, the three-pointer. So we will see the three-point be a crucial factor in uh, the Lipscomb side of the court. The Trojans have really relied on running gun. They really have. Uh, and so that's probably what the Trojans will be getting. Okay, Carl. Well, we're ready to uh, stay tuned for the opening tip-off. We've got starting lineups and lots more action to come. Uh, as you can see, uh, a lot of action on the floor right now. But we'll be back after this message. W61AR TV, Channel 61, in cooperation with Trebekah Nazarene College, presents NAIA Collegiate Basketball, featuring teams from the Tennessee Collegiate Athletic Conference. Good evening and welcome once again to Trojan Fieldhouse. We're getting ready to start the starting lineups as they are introduced. We will call them off to you. Well, let's check out David Lipscomb, Steve. Uh, 
At guard, 6'3", senior, senior from Huntsville, Alabama, number 22, Anthony Jones. And joining Anthony Jones on the floor, playing at another guard position, number 10, a 5'10", senior, all-time leading scorer in Trebekah history, all-time leading assist man in Trebekah history, and District 24 Player of the Year, Avery Patton. And at guard for the Bison, 6'1", junior from Huntsville, Alabama, number 20, Greg Pottle. For the Trojans, at another guard, 6'1", junior, he's out of Nashville, first year on the Trojans Ball Club, wearing number 25, Sandy McLean. Starting center for Checking the center for Lipscomb, the 6'7 freshman from number here in Nashville, Tennessee, number 44, Philip Hutchinson. And that's the man we need to keep an eye on for the inside game. And the man to contest him, 6'9, he's a junior, wears number 31, Mac Heberlin, also out of Nashville. Checking the forwards for David Lipscomb. 6'5 senior, senior from Maker, Florida. Number 40, Chris Martello. And at a forward for the Trojans. First forward for the Trojans will wear number 33. He's a 6'5 junior out of Kentucky, Scott Heiser. And finally, playing forward for the Bison, 6'3 senior from Franklin, Tennessee. Number 32, Richard Taylor. And the final starter for the Trojans will be number 11, 6'1". He's a junior, playing forward, and uh, might as well be a guard in a lot of instances. His name's Charles Brooks. Brooks comes to us from Aquinas Junior College, first year in the NAIA is uh, this year. And this is what's happening. You can see it right here, the stands are not sitting, they're standing. <laughs> Lipscomb uh, gathered in their chairs, the team's in huddles. We're ready for an exciting matchup. We may also mention, Carl, other players on the teams that'll play a big part in tonight's ball games for the Trojans. Number 21, Reggie Tiller, and uh, also number 34, Stacy Mason, will see a lot of playing time. Well, I tell you what, uh, Coach Don Meyer will use his bench all night long. Uh, guys like Bob Ford and Darren Henry, Marcus Bodie, uh, Dave Kimbrell, they'll be coming on the court. Uh, let's talk about our officials for tonight's game. A job that this is the last job that I would want to do this evening, and that's officiate this ball game. Uh, Mr. Todd Graves and Mr. Charles Watkins have the dirty deed of officiating and wearing the stripes shirts for tonight's ball game, and they are about to get this thing underway. Tipping the ball will be number 31 for Rebecca Mac Heberlin. He'll be going against Chris Martello. The shorter Martello at 6'5", will have to outjump the big 6'9", man. We'll see if he can do it. And Bison's control the tip. Greg Cottle will bring it down the floor. And quick move inside, Martello has it. Bison's draw first blood. Martello inside, we looked at the Trojans setting up a 2-3 uh, a zone, kind of allowing Lipscomb to feel their way through the defense. Uh, we check Lipscomb and they've got a 2-3 zone as well. They will mix up the defense as we, talk, as we talked earlier. Nice follow up. Sandy McLean misses the basket and Charles Brooks puts it in from the back door. We've Wide got open. Richard Taylor misses, but Anthony Jones come up with the rebound, and Jones hits. Steve, on that last time down, the Trojans had a full court zone. They put a lot of pressure as we see a three-point attempt from Avery Patton, which does not fall. Uh, not a common factor for Avery to be taking a three-point attempt. And we've got a charge called in the lane. That charge on Anthony Jones, the first foul of the ball game. The fast Charles Brooks getting into the lane. It looked like Anthony Jones was wide open coming down the floor. The, Tro the Bisons had made a great fast break, but uh, somehow, somehow Brooks got into the lane and set up 
in time to draw the foul. Good job on defense by the Trojans. Well, the score is four to two. Just a few seconds have ticked off the clock so far. McLean, three-point land, 20-footer. Trojans up now 5-4. First lead for the Trojans in the ball game. Mac Heberlin. Good down rebound. The Good rebound by Mac Heberlin. Uh, we talked earlier, uh, Mac Heberlin has really been uh, in a slump lately this, toward the end of the season. Uh, he finally broke loose and had a good game last Thursday. Uh, so we expect to see a lot from Mac Heberlin as far as the Trojans are concerned. Trojans working the ball inside to Heberlin. No good. Taylor with the rebound. Good pass inside to Hutchinson. Heiser gets the rebound, Hutchinson missing the shot. Every Patton looking to find an open lane inside. He puts it up, and we've got a foul called. It looks like it's gonna be on number 10, Avery Patton. And it is, as an offensive foul. The first foul for the Trojans in the ball game. David Lipscomb fans really like Avery Patton. You can tell by the crowd reaction. <laughs> They'll chant Avery when he does anything. Avery uh, is known to give the fans a hard time during ball games too. He sure is. <laughs> Hutchinson on the inside, good move. Does not fall again though. Hutchinson, one of the top percentage shooters in the league. And block shot, great shot, uh, great block by number 20, Greg Cottle. And you know, I think it was a good idea for Avery to bring the ball back out rather than as he was tempted to take that shot. Three point attempt, doesn't fall. Heiser with the rebound and in for two. Seven four now. Trojans up again, uh, three point lead. Anthony Jones with it on the outside. Baskin Hutchison. Sorry, we had a little technical difficulty there. And so we're back. We had three point play there by McLean. The Bisons also picked up two while we were having that problem. We had some fans that uh, <laughs> moved some equipment on us. So we'll see if we can control that so that it doesn't happen again tonight <laughs> during the ball game. Packed house here in Trojan Fieldhouse with all these fans that we've got in here. It's hard to move around, much less be able to function efficiently. And uh, we have number 31, Mac Heberlin, called for the foul. Hutchison gets the shot and will go to the line. There you saw a quick look at Heberlin, who committed the foul. And Hutchison, one of the top free throw shooters in the conference as well, hits on that one. Hutchison, his free throw average is 79%. Uh, Trojans get a, excuse me, Steve. Trojans get a break there on that, uh, that mix-up. Avery getting a hold of the ball. But on the outside, of course, the Trojans working that three-guard offense. Sandy and McLean on the outside for three. Check that. The official will not give it to him. The two-point shot. That's eight points for Sandy. Avery Patton raising his arms, asking the official for the three-point shot. I, it looked to me from here like a three-point shot. The official was on, on the play for the call. 12-9 the score. And shot uh, right there by Taylor blocks. Trojans come up with a loose ball again. Uh, some good defensive work inside by the Trojans and actually a little bit surprising to me. And maybe Patton misses on the offensive end. Patton keeps taking that three-point shot. It's got Coach Frank Wilson a little concerned. He hasn't made one yet. On the outside, Taylor with it into Hutchison. Hutchison sees Martello open. And a foul on the floor is called on Mac Heberlin, and the shot will not count. 
But Martello will uh, draw the foul. That was and a good call, Steve. Martello coming into the lane. Uh, Caught uh, Mac a little bit with the Trojans. That'll, that'll be Mac's second, by the way. Mac will be sitting down. Scott uh, Stacy Macer coming in. Fifteen minutes left to go here in the first half of tonight's contest. Martello gets the inbound pass from Cottle, who takes a three-pointer way off air ball. Martello wants to go up again, can't find an open man. Anthony Jones from three, still no good. Charles Brooks finally comes up with a rebound for the Trojans. Good rebound by Brooks. Brooks is on the top of the key, saw the ball falling and stretched his body uh, about as much as it could stretch to get a hold of that. McLean from the outside, inside to Brooks. 14-9 now, Trojans still in the lead here in the early going. That was the fourth point for Brooks on the night. Again. Thanks. Stacy Mason uh, deflects the pass. Sandy McLean comes up with it, misses the shot. Martello comes up, no, uh, loose ball still going out of bounds and out off of the Trojans. Called out off of, I believe, Charles Brooks, who hit it last. And uh, Martello will inbound the ball. Okay, Darren Henry in the lineup for Martello. So Martello takes a breather here in the early going. Steve, both teams are giving 150% of their energy to this ball game. We talk about uh, Trebekah has, has beaten uh, Lipscomb twice in the last three meetings. Uh, Lipscomb uh, winning the first meeting this season in the preseason tournament. Hutchinson has seven points with that basket. But as I was saying, uh, the series records does not matter. Does not matter whatsoever. What we've got is whichever team will win this ball game. Avery Patton. Advances. Field goal from 21 feet or so. And that makes it 17-11 with a three-point shot. But coming right back, Darren Henry. 17-14 now. Charles Brooks gets a shot partially deflected by Darren Henry. And uh, Bison's looking to cut the lead to one. And a great shot by Anthony Jones. Good move by Jones. He came into the lane, uh, went by three defenders, and put the ball on the board. Good aggressive play. Uh, that aggressiveness between Jones and Hutchinson will keep Lipscomb uh, in a lead, if not within the game. And. Uh, We've got a foul call underneath. And we'll have to wait and see who this one's on. I have yet to figure so it out. Number 21, Reggie Tiller. Number 40, Chris Martello back in the lineup for the Bisons. That uh, foul was on number 24 for the Bisons, Bob Ford. And so Trojans came back up with it, still didn't convert points wise. And Bisons now with a chance to take the lead back. 17-16 Six, on the scoreboard, wide open, Anthony Jones on the back line. And he moves it back out to Cottle. Cottle over to Jones again. And an alley-oop attempt falls into Stacy Mason's arms. Reggie Tiller has trouble handling the ball coming down court, but uh, he does pick it up. The Trojans with the ball. Steve, the last few ball games, Stacy Mason has really played exceptionally well defensively. As we see the ball break away toward Bison's basket. Yes. And we'll have a foul called underneath. A foul committed by Sandy McLean. That's Sandy's first foul. McLean called there, as you said, Carl, and uh, We'll see Greg Cottle go to the line. He was trying to do anything he could to keep Cottle from uh, getting that shot on the fast break. After the errant pass, Charles Brooks throwing it down and uh, not quite getting it to uh, Reggie Tiller. Tiller out of the ball game now and Patton back in. Free throw no good on the bonus. Avery Patton misses the shot. Cottle with a fast break attempt again coming down. Slams at home. Bison's up 2017. Steve, what we got now is a case of momentum. 
whoever can maintain the momentum will break away. And right now, David Lipscomb has done that well. They've kept the momentum going their way. Uh, the last few baskets have not fallen for the Trojans. And Lipscomb have been going, have been capitalizing on these turnovers, but we see yet another turnover here, a traveling call. Wade Tomlinson caught that pass and couldn't, uh, couldn't keep his feet still, and he came down, and he was off balance, and the Trojans get the ball back. 11.38 on the clock as the Trojans wait to inbound the ball. You see Bison fans there in the corner just packed in, and they're really here to cheer for this Bison team tonight in the uh, visitor's court here in Trojan Fieldhouse. Stacy Mason puts one up. Trojans back within one. Avery Patton just as cold as ice as, 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 as we've been watching the last few shots he's been taking. Uh, He's been taking a lot of uh, gambling three-point attempts, and they just haven't been falling. Stacey Mason was able to get that rebound and cover that for the Trojans. Ford Bob putting Ford, into. Yeah. Patton in the lane gets the shot partially blocked, and a foul called on uh, Darren Henry by the looks of it underneath as Sandy McLean went up with the uh, shot on the rebound. Henry's first foul of the night. Coming into the ball game, Hutchison replaces Henry, and uh, Tony Clanton also is coming in. Trojans inbound the ball. Vicious defense being played right now by the Bisons. Very aggressive zone. They're looking very good, Steve, and they've been putting in, uh, Coach Don Meyer has been putting in a lot of substitutions, keeping his ball team fresh. Something that's, that can be very advantageous for a team, especially with so much pressure, so much tension, uh, as we've got in this ball game tonight. Taylor. Which, uh, Taylor getting that steal. Again, keeping the momentum going Bison's way. Score 22-19, David Lipscomb. Bison's working the ball around up top again. Starting lineup in the ball game for the Bison's. Taylor takes the pass across the court. Anthony Jones in three point area into Hutchison. Hutchison's gonna go up with it. Good shot by Hutchison from the lane. 19, by uh, 24, 19 right now. And the first half is one half over. 10 minutes left to go now in the half. And uh, these Bisons are up right now. Momentum wise, they are on top. Trojans miss another shot and knock the ball out of bounds. Bison ball. The Trojans are missing their shots and they're getting out rebounded or they're getting out positioned so that they're not able to get a rebound. We'll see Reggie Tiller come in for Sandy McLean. Anthony Jones coming back on the floor. Coach, Coach Frank Wilson hollering to his team, you've got to penetrate the lane. They're not getting their men inside, they're being impatient, and he's hollering at them to penetrate and to get their momentum going, going back their way. Hutchison goes up, Heiser called for a foul on the shot, the shot is good. And Lipscomb up by seven, 26-19. We'll have a bonus by Hutchison with attempt to go, a uh, chance to go up by eight right here. Hutchison shoots a very consistent 80% from the free throw line as he makes that bonus. The Bisons on a roll right now, tearing up the Trojans here in the uh, middle of the first half, 19-27 right now. Trojans looking to get some things together. And Patton taking an open ride down the lane and he gets it, foul called on Tony Clanton. And count the shot. One bonus now being given to Avery. As Avery makes the Lipscomb fans chant Avery, you'd think. Oh, they love him to death. By the Trojans, Avery Patton. We'll have a bonus free throw after being fouled by David Lipscomb, number okay. two. The uh, Trebekah fans are now chanting Avery. They decide they can do it. If Lipson fans <laughs> try to do it to mess him up, the Trojan fans will do it to help him. So. Well, Avery's really been cold tonight. That was only his fifth point on the night. He's taken a lot of shots, especially from the outside that just have not fallen. Uh, that free throw doesn't fall, but Heiser comes down with the rebound. Struggle for the ball, got knocked out of bounds, and it goes Bison's way. The pendulum's just continuing to swing Bison's way, scores 
Uh, we got 9.20 left to play in the first half. Uh, the Trojans not showing press right now. They just drop back in their 2-3 uh, zone. Clanton bringing the ball down, being very patient, looking for the open shot. Uh, open man inside. Taylor into Hutchison. Hutchison goes up. Stacy Mason called for a foul, getting Hutchison with the body. The, tro the problem is right now, Carl, for the Trojans, that on defense, they're leaving their feet. When the Hutchison gets the ball, the defenders are going up when with the fake, and Hutchison's waiting, and he's going up when they're on their way down. And it's getting them in trouble foul-wise, as well as Hutchison making the baskets. Bonus free throw right now. Excuse me, this is a two-shot foul. And uh, Hutchison makes the first. Twenty-nine, twenty-one. Bison's on top. Hutchison shooting 100% from the free throw line. He's got six points on the night. I rather check that. Fourteen points. Inside, a foul called on Chris Martello. And it is on the shot, so the Trojans will go to the line. It'll be two opportunities from the line for the Trojans. Charles Brooks heading to the line at 76% top free throw shooter for the Trojans this season. And uh, that was the fifth team foul on the Bisons. The Trojans have six team fouls now, so the next one will put them over the limit. Brooks puts the first one through, 29-22. Martello's first foul, that was. There you see, look at number 11, Charles Brooks. Bison's bringing the ball down, 29-23. And see if they continue to score it, Will, here. Taylor for three, no good. Rebound by Scott Heiser. So Trojans with a rare opportunity as of late to pick up a couple points on the Bison lead. McLean goes for three, misses. Rebound by Taylor. And that, Coach Wilson is not happy with the shot selection. Steve, I'm telling you, the, the thing that's really hurting the Trojans right now as they're concentrating on outside shots and it's not working. What they need to do is get the ball inside. They need to work the ball to Heberlin, or, or rather Heiser and Stacy Mason. Heberlin will be back in the ball game shortly. Uh, right, see, we'll, we'll have the guards push out and work that three guard offense. We'll be taking it around uh, and then we take that outside shot. Now, Sandy McClain. McClain hit that one, but the, the reason why the Trojans are at a deficit right now is because they haven't hit those outside shots, and what we've got is a 10-point uh, spread there for uh, Sandy McLean. He's got 10 points on the night. He's the top scoring guard so far for the Trojans. 29-25 now, four-point Bison lead. Hutchison uh, gets a shot, a pass block by Stacy Mason. Good job inside by Mason, and the Trojans finally getting something accomplished on the inside and again Patton tries from three and he cannot hit. Patton is cold. He is going to have to get on if the Trojans are going to win tonight. Anthony Jones from two points. Anthony Jones. 31-25 now. Sandy McLean taking the ball down. Trojans trying to set up the offense again and open is Sandy McLean and he does not hit with a three-point attempt. Stacy Mason gets it, takes it up for two. It's a good aggressive play by Stacy Mason. He's been a real factor for the Trojans all year defensively, uh, but right now he's being more effective on the offense. And a charge called on Philip Hutchison. Stacy Mason was being a little rough under there, and Mason was lucky he didn't get called for a foul, but uh, Hutchison does pick up the foul. Well, Mason was well planted. He wasn't going anywhere. And that pendulum that we were talking about is swinging a little bit toward the uh, Trojan side of the court right now. They've had a couple of good breaks. Scores 31-27.
Trebekah back in this ball game. Both teams now with six fouls. A four point Bison lead. Patton decides from the three throw line he's gonna try another one and he hits again. Seven points now for Patton. More than anything that helps, more than anything that helps for uh, a little bit of confidence. Patton's got seven points. A little bit more comfortable maybe. He really needs that confidence too. Uh, I noticed a couple things different so far tonight, Carl, from the Trojan victories over the Bisons. Number one is this man right here with the ball, number 44, Philip Hutchison. When Hutchison has been in the ball game, he has not been as effective. Right there, a foul called on Scott Heiser for a hold inside. One and one opportunity will be afforded uh, Bob Ford. But when, when Hutchison has, in the last couple ball games that the Trojans won, when he's been in, he has not been as effective as he's been tonight. If he continues being this effective, it will be uh, to the detriment of the Trojans. There you saw Coach Frank Wilson with a chagrin look on his face. Six minutes to go in this ball game as the Bisons go up 32-29. Uh, Three-point Bison lead. And we've got uh, official holding a little conference in the lane, trying to tell the guys, come on, let's play ball, I guess. By the way, with Ford at the line, he's shooting 68%. He made his first. 32-29, six minutes even left to play in the first half with the Bisons on top. Trojans bringing the ball down. Now down by four, looking to cut the difference to two. And Heberlin, uh, no, it looks like Martello. Martello came up with the rebound. Excuse me, Darren Heberlin. Henry with the rebound. Oh, yeah, check I that. Henry kept came up with the rebound. Uh, Heberlin tried to knock it away, but Henry maintained. And Mac Heberlin called for his third foul, just coming back in the ball game uh, here in the first half. Well, and we'll as we, we mentioned, Heberlin would have to have a big ball game, and his numbers are only growing on the fouls right now. That is number three, and another one on the Trojans to the line goes Philip Hutchison. Scott Heiser will replace Heberlin in the lineup. Again, Hutchison shooting a magnificent 80% from the free, free throw line. Heberlin has been a big factor in other games between the Bisons and the Trojans uh, this season. Just with the fact that he's the only man taller than Philip Hutchison, who can just basically stand on the floor and uh, play some defense against him, and that's made a big difference. The officials have made a conference and have changed their call. And what have they changed it to? That's what we need to know. Okay, and it's a one and one, I believe. I guess the foul was on the floor. So we're at a one and one, 80% free throw shooter. Hutchison and, makes his first. And we can't expect him to miss too much tonight. He's gonna hit those. Hutchison, one of the leading scorers in the district this year. He averages 24 and a half points a ball game. He's got 16 right now. And charge being called on Charles Brooks. Bisons will go to the line once again. And a technical. We'll wait to see what's happening here. Uh, Bob Ford is not happy with the call. Right now we're seeing the officials having some problems with some of the calls. And uh, with a fan reaction, they might risk losing control of the ball game. They really need to make sure that they know what they're calling here and, and be together on it. 
even if they make a few mistakes, uh, these delays and questions are going to raise more question in the minds of the fans or minds of the players when this game's over as to who should have won. Double foul. Okay, we have a double foul call. And it'll be a jump ball. The Trojans will take the possession on the uh, alternate possession. Bob Ford and Bob Ford and also Charles Brooks were called for those fouls. The Trojans miss again. Bison's up by six, looking to increase their lead with five minutes left to go in the first half. And Bob Ford. Uh, a little bit aggressive in the lane, sent uh, Charles Brooks kind of scooting across the floor. Official Bob Bob Charles Bob Watkins Bob. was right there on the play and made the call. Excuse me, Carl. Bob Ford picked up his third foul right there. So Ford takes a seat. Charles Brooks goes to the line. As of last week, checking the stats, Charles Brooks shot about 76%. Uh, for the season. And Earlier this year, the Trojans one of the worst free throw shooters in the district, and they improved that quite a bit before the year was out. They're up to 70% as a team uh, from the free throw line, which has been a great improvement. That's eighth in the district. Lipscomb comes into the game number two in free throw shooting at 77%. Brooks makes his eighth point on the night, 35-31. David Lipscomb on top, as you saw the scoreboard right there. A little bit less than five minutes left to play in the first half. And Anthony Jones almost loses that as Charles Brooks trying to play some aggressive defense. Trojans trying to tighten up their defense a little bit more, putting a little more pressure, causing them to work that ball back toward the inside. Now, Philip Hutchinson, all he's got to do is step back toward the basket, and his back door will be wide open. Uh, of course, Heiser's since stepped inside. Heiser in good position. Hutchinson's does not fall. The Trojans come up with it. We get a foul called on the Bisons. Richard like, Taylor committed the foul. I I never saw the foul, but they were scrambling the way they were scrambling on the floor there. It was uh, Pretty crowded territory. Official picking up a foul on Taylor, and it'll send Heiser to the line. That'll be a one-and-one one opportunity with the Trojans down by four. Heiser will try to cut the lead to three and then possibly to two. Now, Heiser shot 72% uh, as far as the season goes. If we remember the, the last time these two schools met, Scott Heiser uh, played an important role in making his free throws during the latter part of that ball game and kept the, the Trojans in the lead and uh, initially brought them to the win. He and makes Heiser both hits. of his. 33-35, Trojans down by two. And David Lipscomb looking to get some of that lead back. They were up by eight at one point. Hutchison's got it triple teamed. You know the man's important when they put three guys around you. They sure did. I don't know how the Trojans can do that and the Bisons not get the open man. Well, they've obviously been instructed by Coach Frank Wilson for the Trojans to do that when Hutchinson gets the inside as he is there. A block by Stacy Mason, but Martello picks up the basket on the rebound. Triple teaming like that leaves uh, a man like Martello open for the rebound. Score 37-33, Bisons, Avery Patton on top. Patton still remains cold, Steve. And Cottle, uh, Martello with it. Anthony Jones for three, no good, rebound Heiser. Bison's up by four again. Sandy McLean, fancy footwork, and he misses the layup. Jones takes it down, he puts some fancy stuff on too, and Hutchison puts it in. Lipscomb saying, if you can do it, we can do it better. 
18 points for Hutchinson, and you know David Lipscomb is looking good on the running gun. They're playing Trevecca's ball game, and they're playing it very well. Again, we need to talk about the guards for the Trojans. Those guards have not hit their outside shots, and that is why, I mean, we look at the stats and we see that Avery Patton has only got seven points as he missed that. And we'll see Anthony a Jones. Here. Anthony Jones. The Bison fans are on their feet. They've got some cheering to do right now here in Trojan Fieldhouse as their Bison's up again by eight. Two minutes left to go in the half. Coach Don Meyer saying, uh, telling him to play some tight inside ball. Cottle right there called for the foul. Coach Don Meyer was telling his guys to lay off the outside shot and also settle down. Sandy McLean at the free throw line for the Trojans. McLean shooting very well for the entire season. Uh, as far as the Trojan is concerned, he's shooting 75% from the line. At halftime of this contest, you'll be able to see information about both our schools that are playing tonight, both David Lipscomb and Trevecca. So you'll want to watch for that. And uh, right, so will come in for the then we'll be back. We'll, we'll have some halftime stats for you and a little information. Be back with second half action. Right now, 154 left to go. This half not over by any means. 41-34. Bison's up by seven. Trojans struggling. Bison's are hot. The Bison's the 16th ranked team in the nation, facing the Trojans ranked 12th in the, in the NAIA nationally. And uh, both these teams were the opponents. Shot blocked right there by, or pass blocked by Mason. Reggie Tiller looks at three and doesn't take it. Tiller takes it this time, no good. Taylor comes up with it. Score 41-35, as you see, a minute 15 left to play in the first half, and we get a foul call. Ball out of bounds, that is. Yeah, check that, out of bounds, and we'll go Lipscomb way. Clock winding down, 108 and counting. Bison's plenty of time on the shot clock. Hutchison gets it oh! blocked. And the official on the blind side of the play made that call on Reggie Tiller. And uh, pretty, pretty gutsy call, fans a little upset. Appeared to be a clear block, a very clean block. Uh, but the officials called the foul on Tiller. That was his first, Hutchinson from the line. And that's the man committing the foul, the bald-headed <laughs> Reggie Tiller. Hey, Tiller sh shaving his head as a ritual when he plays David Lipscomb. He's done it from uh, his freshman year, his freshman season, and continues in the tradition. 20 points for Philip Hutchinson. 20 points is almost half of the Bison's production, and a big part of that is the fact that sitting on the bench is 6'10", Mac Haberlin, 6'9". Now, now, that was a good rebound by Sandy McLean. He was sort of in traffic. Timed his jump very well, though, and it was able to make that. Uh, he's got 14 points. Again, Sandy being the uh, leading scorer for the Trojans as, as we speak. Shot clock turned off. Bisons are going to work for the last shot. We've got 23 seconds left on the game, on the, uh, on the game clock. 43-37 the score. Six-point Bison lead. Lipscomb defending national champions. And they want a chance to return to Kansas City. They Hutchinson know this is on important. the inside again. Oh, Hutchinson does not come up with it. Ball out of bounds off of the Trojans. But two seconds left on the game clock. Bisons will have to work a quick play inside. I'm surprised we haven't had any timeouts called this half, Carl. I'm surprised as well, especially when the, the Trojans were, were struggling. 
it looked to me, Carl, like that inbound pass was uh, stepped on the line, Cottle stepped on the line, but it doesn't matter. Time has expired, 43-37 the score. And uh, we're gonna be back after a little while with a wrap up of halftime statistics. So stay right here, Channel 61, we'll be back. And welcome back. We're at halftime here in Trojan Fieldhouse. Uh, halftime score, David Lipscomb, Bisons 43, Trebekah Trojans 37. Uh, recapping quickly, the first half statistics, Carl, what do you have? Well, we're taking a look at the statistics right now. Leading scorer for the Bisons, Philip Hutchinson, 20 points. He's cashed in on about half of the profits uh, that the Bisons have been enjoying in, during the first half. Uh, followed by Jones with eight points, a Martello with four points. Uh, those are the top scorers for the uh, for the Bisons, and nobody's in foul trouble uh, per se uh, for the Bisons. Now checking the Trojans, uh, leading scorer is the uh, guard Sandy McLean. He's got 14 points, uh, followed by Brooks with eight, and then Avery Patton having seven. Uh, when we talk about the reasons why we see the Trojans with the deficit, why we see the Bisons with the lead. Philip Hutchinson has been getting inside. He's been very effective. He's been playing oh, very well. Uh, we're not surprised. He's a good ball player, and we've seen good performances at him all season long, and he's, he's just playing consistent. The Trojans are having trouble keeping him from the inside. They've been triple teaming, teaming him, and he's still been uh, cashing in on some of those inside uh, rebounds and also on the inside shots. Now, uh, the guards for the Trojans have been suffering from the outside. They've been taking a lot of shots, especially Avery Patton, and they're just cold. They haven't found it. Uh, I talked with Greg Ruff of WNAZ just moments ago, and he said Avery's just not shooting right. Uh, he's shooting, he's snapping his wrist a little bit. He's not using his own style. He might be affected a little bit by the pressure. We don't know. Um, for the Trojans, we need to see the guards to get hot. The Bisons, they just need to continue to play consistent as they've been playing. Keep that inside game with Hutchinson. Uh, keep the running gun game going. They've been playing the running gun game very well. Uh, the Bisons really don't have to change a whole lot. Uh, they just need to keep consistent ball playing. We're in for a really special second half. It could go either way. Uh, the Trojans are known for uh, their second half runs. We might see it. We might not. Who knows, Steve? Looks exciting, Carl. We're ready for a second half, and uh, we hope you stay with us. It's going to be a fight to the finish. Once again, the score right now, Lipscomb 43, Trevecca 37. We'll be back with a second half right after this. And welcome back once again to Trojan Fieldhouse. I'm Steve Perry along with Carl East. Second half action about ready to get underway. The Bisons will inbound the ball because the Trojans picked up an alternate possession uh, ball during the first half. So 43-37 the score as we have 20 minutes of ball left to play here in this ball game. This, uh, this half, the end of this game, whoever's ahead will face either Lincoln Memorial or Lee College from the east side of Tennessee. And they will that will be the final in the District 24, and that will determine the team that goes to Kansas City. So whoever it is, though, they will play either in Trojan Fieldhouse or in McQuitty Gym, depending on who wins this ballgame. Right now, Bisons have a pretty comfortable lead to start a second half with six points. Not a whole lot of changes as far as the defense is concerned in the Trojans' ball court. Lipscomb being patient, keeping that ball on the outside. Again, the Trojans need to keep Phillip Hutchinson from the inside. A foul committed. And we have a foul. Scott Heiser called for the foul. The shot good. 45-37. And from the line, Martello, the 80% shooter. Nine point Bison lead, the biggest of the ball game, 46-37.
sort of a low scoring game, Steve, as we take a look at Scott Heiser hit for two. At six points for Heiser, and Heiser just might have decided that he's going to take the place of the out, outside shooting guards tonight uh, for the second half. Crowd wanting a, a traveling call on Jones. Officials don't see it that way. Taylor open in three point range, and he doesn't take it. Cottle trying to work the ball in. Martello. Bison's being very patient. Shot clock down to 17. Game clock at 8.44 and count, 18.44 and counting, excuse me. 46.39, David Lipscomb on top. That ball almost stolen away by the quick hands of Avery Patton. Good move on the inside. Jones just not able to fall. Watch out for the Trebekah guard. Sadie McLean in the lane, does not fall. McLean missed the shot and a fast break going the other way. Anthony Jones and he's fouled. And the foul called on the front end of that play on Avery Patton before Stacy Mason ever did commit the foul. So play already dead. No basket that's and no two. shot. Uh, basket wasn't good anyway, but. Steve, that's two fouls on Avery Patton as, again, the Lipscomb fans uh, acknowledge the fact that they, they love Avery so much. And Martello gets fouled. No. Yes, okay, Scott Heiser is called for the foul. That was a good call, a little bit too much aggression on Heiser's part. Heiser lost control coming in and uh, was in the air, couldn't stop himself. Anthony Jones with it outside. Bison's with open Cottle, but Cottle not shooting from three-point range. A.J. Will. And Scott Heiser comes up with a rebound off the missed shot. Heiser's got eight rebounds on the night. Seven-point really lead for the Bisons. Mason looking to cut it to five. Mason misses two shot attempts. 46-39 still. Inside to Hutchinson all night long. Timeout being called by the Trebekah Trojans. With the score 48-39, we're going to take a break from Trojan Fieldhouse. We'll be back right after this. And for you people enjoying our live uh, exclusive coverage downstairs, we just want you to know that if you want a copy of this ball game, you can call channel 61 and uh, they will be available this week to be purchased if you'd like a copy for videotape for your home. Okay, coming back. And we're back at Trojan Field House once again. Lipscomb Bisons 48, Trevecca Trojans 39. Nine point Bison lead, matches their biggest of the ball game. 17 45 left to go in the second half. And the Trojans, conference champions and uh, number 12 in the nation, fighting right now for a berth. Scott Heiser taking some of the longer shots that he's taken all season from that area. Heiser with eight points on the night. He's coming into the second half, uh, kind of filling in for. Uh, the guards, the guards have really been missing on those outside shots. Trojans with a break. Watch Avery on the outside. Good pass, Sandy McLean. And it falls for Avery Patton. Now let me tell you something, Steve, about momentum. Something, the antics of the, of the tro Trojan guards. That simple play right there will get the fans in this field house back in the ball game. But, Martello. <laughs> however, Martello was not phased a bit. And Lipscomb again puts a point on the board. 50-43, uh, Lipscomb on top. The Bisons have done that all night. Whenever the Trojans start coming back with the momentum, the Bisons have found a way to counter it. Martello's shot on the other end did it right there. And a foul called inside on the Trojans. It'll be on Chris Martello with a hack. It'll be his second foul, the first foul of the, on the Bisons this half. 50-43 still um, to the line, Scott Heiser. He will shoot two. Trying to cut the lead 
to six with this shot. Heisler shoots 72%. Steve, the Bisons need to be careful here. The Trojans are famous for making a second half run within a few minutes into the second half where they get their good point spread. And uh, so the Bisons really need to be careful. They, may, they need to make sure that their momentum continues to stay their way. It scores 50-45. By the way, that was Heiser's 10th point for the night. And playing some aggressive defense on the outside, Sandy McLean looking to try to create some trouble. But driving inside is caught with a blocking foul called on Scott Heiser. And I think Heiser just picked up his fourth foul. Heiser not planted on the inside. Four team fouls on Trevecca and the fourth personal on Scott Heiser. Mac Haberlin re-enters the ball game. Haberlin with three fouls. And the Trojan forwards in trouble. That's going to hurt the Trojans putting Heiser on the bench because he's made the last few points for the Trojans. Uh, free throws and also outside shots. Needless to say, Heiser is very disgusted with himself. Hutchison traveled, walked on the inside, and surprising call. Lipscomb fans were uh, looking for a foul called on Mason, and uh, pretty much everybody in the gym thought maybe there was a foul either called on Heberlin or Mason, but that was a traveling call, and the Trojans will, should capitalize on this turnover. We will see the score 50-45. Bison's on top, and Avery Patton hits for three. We might see Avery get back in this ball game. And the score 50-48 as the Trojans start a comeback. Bison's now only ahead by two. Once again, 50-48 the score. The two-point uh, Bison lead as they look to try to break the Trojan momentum once again. Martello for three, no good. Trojans with a chance to tie it up right here. Charles Brooks. And Trojans pull it back out. A wise move. They don't want to force anything, especially if they're looking for that lead. Once again, 50-48, a two-point lead for Bisons as Avery takes again a three-pointer tip, and he hits it. We are seeing Avery Patton get back in this ball game, Steve. Score 51-50, and the Bisons call a timeout. The momentum is going Trojans' way. The score is 51-50, Trojans on top. We'll be back to Trojan Fieldhouse right after this. Circle K spell off going on in the floor right now. Uh, what was that? Okay. And we're back once again, ready for some more second half action uh, on Trojan Fieldhouse. Steve Perry with you along with Carl East and bringing you all the action in the second round of District 24 uh, playoffs in NAIA basketball. And we have a contest for you with the Trojans taking the lead from the Bisons for the first time in a long time by one point right now, 51-50. Bison's looking to get some more points on the board. It took that time out to stop the Trojan momentum. Coach Don Meyer up calling the offense, trying to tell him what to do. Hutchison, Hutchison again with it, and he's gonna go up. Shot blocked by Haberlin, the big man who's been on the bench. That was a good call, Steve. Haberlin coming up with that rebound. Didn't have much, didn't have a lot of room to move. Uh, he probably should have hesitated, not gone anywhere, but he moved, got called for the traveling. Turnover, Bison should capitalize off of this. We will see. Ball inbounded. Anthony Jones takes the pass. Bison's again trying to set up that offense. Avery Patton being aggressive, and the ball going out of bounds off of Martello, and an elbow being thrown by Patton. 
Excuse me, that was off Taylor, the ball going out of bounds, and Patton hit Taylor right in the chest with a forearm. And uh, fans not real happy about that, and Trojan's side, or the Bison side, excuse me, as the Trojans have the ball on the offensive end, a chance to increase their lead for a change. Three-point attempt, no good, and Heberlin cannot come up with a rebound, the only man under the boards for the Trojans, as the Bisons pretty much had the inside all to their cells. Sandy McLean tries for a fancy steal, can't come up with it. It's another thing the Bisons have taken advantage of all night is Trojans going for steals. Right there, Anthony Jones. Bisons retake the lead, 52-51. A look at head coach Don Meyer, uh, pretty much expressionless right now. He's got two players uh, that will be coming into the ball game. David Lipscomb is uh, famous for keeping their uh, players fresh, and they keep those players coming in. Heberlin has made his first two points of the night. The score is 53-52, Trojans with the lead. That one does not fall for the Bisons, and again, the Trojans will bring down the ball. Avery Patton in command. Patton trying some fancy stuff inside and pulls the ball back out. Again, a good move. Uh, the Trojans don't want to force anything. They need to work for everything they get. Three points, Avery Patton. Folks, he's come alive. I don't know what's happened here. All of a sudden, 56-52. Uh, we didn't see this all the first half. Patton would try those shots. He was stone cold, bouncing solidly off the rim, traveling, called on Hutchison. Momentum definitely Trojan way right now. And suddenly, this gym has come alive as the north, the south side of the gym, rather, with the Trojan fans on it is on their feet and exploding with applause regularly. And uh, now they're chanting Avery. Lipscomb fans on their feet too, but they're not cheering, they're just watching. I think it's just too crowded to sit down, Carl. It's too crowded, it's too hot, there's too much exciting stuff happening on the court right now. And, uh, well, we missed some action there. What? What did occur? I'm not sure what the call was. I the clock did not start as they inbounded the ball, so they'll have to do that again. That was what it was. You're correct, Carl. Thank you for helping me out there. And uh, the official had to call official timeout. We had a lot of action going on. Charles Brooks creating some more action and a six-point Trojan lead. Ten points. 52. Ten points for Charles Brooks. Uh, a good block by Matt Keeberlin. I'll tell you, the pendulum is just sweeping Trojans way right now. The fans are in the ball game. Avery Patton is back in the ball game. And we'll have to see. Looking for a charge call. Bob Ford put a shoulder down. And Charles Brooks and Avery Patton are giving high fives. And another timeout is called by the Bisons. 58 52 on the scoreboard. 12 29 left to go in the second half. We'll be back at Trojan Fieldhouse right after this. We've got 12-29 left to play in the ball game. And it is hot up here. Okay, we'll be coming back very shortly. We'll count down. Five, four, three, two, one. Welcome back to Trojan Fieldhouse. Once again, the Trojans up by six. Quite a turnaround in the last few minutes. Trojans up 58-52. And uh, after being down by nine earlier this half, it's a quick 15-point swing the way of the home team. And uh, the favored team, at least standings-wise, coming into this contest now in the lead. But Lipscomb has to be about as close to these Trojans as any team, if not better, just on the fact of experience. experience All the way to the national championship last year. McLean hits two more, 60-52. 16 points for McLean. 
from inside. The Trojans are really looking good. Magic words, maybe no magic words, but the Trojans have come out the second half to play ball. A and jump we, ball called Charles Brooks goes up and uh, holds the shot of Anthony Jones down. Trojans will, uh, Trojans will take over on the alternate possession. We've got... Uh, let me explain something here real quick, Steve. The uh, house announcer, Mike Johnson, has to call out sub every time there's a sub being called in because the buzzer cannot be heard over the crowd noise. And there are several times where the officials had missed the buzzer and uh, a sub was not able to come in. So we've got the house announcer calling sub over the PA system as well as the buzzer going. That just kind of shows you a little bit about what's going on in Trojan Fieldhouse as far as tension and noise. The Trojans have not missed now going down the floor lots of times down. I can't count it for you. Right now a stolen ball and a kick. Mac Heberlin kicked the ball and the ball out of bounds off the truck or will go out of bounds. Uh, Bison ball. Heberlin just taking a big kick at the ball. He didn't even try to hide it. He just didn't want the Bisons to come up with it. 62-52. <laughs> Trojans by 10. 11.30 left to go. Shot goes in by Martello. Martello. Nice job. Martello doing a real good job going inside. Charles Brooks a little bit of theatrics trying to draw the charge but does not get it. Martello has 11 points on the night. Avery Patton, the little general, setting up the offense. 62-54, Trojans on top. Uh, we've got a foul called underneath. Anthony Jones called for the foul. And as the Bisons start to break the Trojans' momentum right there, they lose it again as uh, the second foul is called on Jones, the third Bison foul of the half. Steve, and just a, pardon me, just saying a quick uh, insight, maybe a quick observation. The Trojans' attitudes have changed immensely. They're joking, they're having a little bit more fun out there. Yeah, they're leading, that's why they're having more fun, but that also will uh, allow them to keep that momentum going. As long as they keep up that morale, that good attitude, uh, the good positive attitude, the Trojans will be able to maintain that momentum. Now right now, if we look into the Bison's faces, they're very serious as they break out of that huddle. Uh, we're not seeing the last of the Bisons. As a matter of fact, we will probably see the Bisons regain the lead several times. I imagine the lead, the lead will change several times during this ball game. But right now, Patton's at the line uh, with the Trojans in the lead. 62-54, we've got 11 minutes left to play in this ball game. I wonder, Carl, if the, Tro if the Bisons don't like to be in this situation. They uh, won the game over Union on a two shot with like two seconds left in the game. It's tied up at 98. And... Uh, Bisons emerged with a last second shot to, to capture the victory and sometimes I think they like to be down and have the pressure on them and there they will come back. There you have a look, excuse me Steve, of uh, President Adams and his wife Beatrice of Trebek and Ezrin College. Uh, President Adams really hadn't joined the uh, Trojan Fieldhouse fans very often this season but I don't think he would have wanted to miss this game. Turnover again, the Trojans bring the ball down. Avery Patton puts it up and no good. He doesn't get the roll. The Trojans go back on defense, 64-54, 10.41 left to go. 10-point Trojan lead. And uh, Bison's trying to slow things down and get their own game going again as the Trojans have quit playing slow ball and uh, picked up the speed a little bit. Foul being called on the floor on Stacy Mason. Reach in foul, and he knew it. Uh, that's the second on Stacy. And the fifth on the Trojans. Steve, it's got to be in the 90s as far as temperature wise, maybe in the hundreds in this gym. It is so packed, packed to, to capacity. It holds about, uh, about 19, 1,800 people. Uh, this afternoon, they had sold 1,600 tickets. Three-point goal by Cottle, and the Bisons pull within seven. Sandy McLean taking a quick run down the floor, and he gets fouled by Martello on the shot. McLean will go to the line. Good job drawing the foul. You know, Carl, uh, we studied in physics, I believe it was, how much heat a uh, body puts out, and it, it's 
like a small heater, actually, when you put it in a closed-in room. We have 1,800 tickets sold here tonight, plus the press and uh, scorekeepers and officials and ball players who all got in free. I'm sure the attendance is somewhere in the 2,000 area, and that is a lot of heat. <laughs> a whole lot of body heat. Sandy makes his first. He's got 17 points. By the way, we're looking at the statistics. Avery Patton's got 20 points, Steve. He has exploded off the, off the bench uh, from uh, halftime with only seven points during the first half as Sandy makes his second, 66-57, Trojans on top. We've got a little bit more than 10 minutes left to play. Avery is back in the ball game, apparently. He's been looking good the last few minutes. And you know who's not in the ball game as much? Philip Hutchinson. That's right. Hutchison has been shut down much more this half. Martello making that one. Martello's got 13 points, and it's been Martello most of the second half for the Bisons. Sandy McLean for two, no good, shot off. Trojans tend to be uh, falling into their uh, rut that they had experienced during the first half where the guards are missing their outside shots. You know, even a foul committed by the Bison seems to slow the Trojans' momentum a little bit, and there a stolen ball by Anthony Jones. 66-61, Trojans up by five now. Bison's cutting the lead. Sixty-six, sixty-one. The Lipscomb fans are back in the ball game. Stacy Mason shoots and it's no good. Sandy McLean catches the ball, shoots as he hangs in the air and is fouled by Richard Taylor. That'll be 68-61 and a chance for another one by McLean. 9:03 on the clock. Sandy's got 20 points and he'll go to the line. Uh, shooting 75% from the free throw line for the season. Uh, Sandy was one of the ball players who also hit most of those free throws during the last time these two teams met. Uh, he and Scott Heiser were very effective in helping uh, the Trojans win that ball game in McQuitty Gym. Sandy sinking that one, the score 69-61, Trojans on top. Both teams have five fouls, and we saw Jones hit for three, 69-64. Trojans lead, and the Tro uh, Trojans are bringing the ball down a little bit slower now. Working the ball around the outside, McLean with a jumper, does not fall. McLean having trouble on those hanging jumpers with him falling short. About two of his last three now have fallen short. The other one was a short shot, and he did make that. Stacy Mason gets it, a foul called on Anthony Jones inside. That'll be his third, and the sixth team foul. 69-64. Five-point Trojan lead. Eight twenty-five in the contest. Trojans inbounding the ball. And right now the Bisons, they seem to like to foul a lot towards the end of the game. Um, they're going to be putting themselves in the one and one situation pretty early here. Again, McLean taking that outside shot. This time, he nails it. He's missed. Uh, the, the last few times he's taken that particular shot, he's missed it. And he nailed it that time, 71-64. Eight minutes left to play in the ball game. Open on the baseline, Taylor. They're letting him shoot, and he hits. Again, Taylor hitting a three-pointer at 71-67. Those three-pointers will keep the Bisons in this ballgame, Steve, and that's they, what they want to do. They, they want to keep the ball on the outside. Uh, Taylor, Martello, they need to be taking those outside shots. Charles Brooks hits the shot, fading away from the free-throw line. And as, you, as we look at this setup right now, the Trojans have got to get out on that three-point shot. They cannot give it away. We've seen the Bisons hitting it too much. The Trojans have been keeping with a man, or uh, checked at a zone defense, 2-3. They've pretty much consistently played that. Occasionally, they'll go to a press zone. That ball falling. And again, 73-69. Nine points for Greg Cottle. Bisons come back to within four. 6.53. Coach Frank Wilson winning a timeout and gets it. 
Score 73-69, four point Trojan lead, 6.51 left to go in the second half. We're gonna take a break, we'll be right back at Trojan Fieldhouse after this. Look at the Lipscomb crowd. It's packed. Once again, those of you watching on closed circuit, you can pick up a tape of this ball game if you'd like a copy by contacting TV61. The phone number is 255-8861 if you want to call them and they'll tell you how you can get a uh, okay, coming back, counting down, five, four, three, two, one. Welcome back to Trojan Fieldhouse. Trojans up by four, 73-69. Steve Perry with you along with Carl East. Lots of excitement left, Carl. <laughs> it's nowhere near over. All right, what kind of adjective is lots? <laughs> lots. Uh... <laughs> It's intense. More than little, I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's intense, to say the least. The score again, 73-69. We're seeing a patient Trojan team, 17 on the shot clock. Avery Patton almost losing that. Ball tipped out by Anthony Jones, and Trojans will inbound the ball. 14 seconds left on the shot clock. Trojans. Working the ball with seven seconds on the shot clock. They've got to shoot five. Patton puts up a three-point attempt. No good. Foul called on Charles Brooks going over the top of Anthony Jones. That's uh, Brooks' second foul, and it was a good call. Brooks may be a little blatant on that, a uh, little frustrated. And Brooks with his second foul of the night. Team foul number six on the Trojans. Both teams will go over the limit on their next foul. Six fouls apiece. Score remains at 73-69. Bison's inbounding the ball, and we see a full court press, man-to-man -man defense. Coach Wilson wanted to fix that up during the timeout. Inside to Martello, good move. Good move. Reggie Tiller called for the foul. That's Tiller's second foul. Martello, uh, receiving that ball on the inside, and that was a definite two points. Substitution for the Trojans, number 33, Scott Heiser, back into the game. Martello will shoot two. 73-69, Trojans on top, Martello at the line. Martello missing that first one. He shoots 80% on the season. Missing the first, he'll go for another. And he misses both of them. Trojans rebound. Avery Patton's going to take it down. He'll hold it up. He should hold it up. We really need to see the Trojans be, play patient ball if they uh, ah. want to keep that lead. He doesn't hold it up long. Avery Patton, 75-69 Trojans. 23 points for Patton. He's uh, working very diligently toward his season average. That's 24 and a half. Trojans get a big rebound, 75-69, uh, and they've got a chance to increase their lead. Reflecting on Hutchinson missing that one from the inside, we really have not heard much from him at all. Uh, it's not necessarily that the Trojans have shut him down. He's gotten the ball on the inside. Uh, he's just gotten cold. Good well, pass inside. Stacy Mason left wide open in the back door. Six back points for in Mason. The in everything. Excuse me, Steve, I can't hear you talking, and so I'm trying to extract uh, six points for Mason. We're stepping all over each other. 77-69, and... Uh, Traveling is we, called on Taylor. Now, the Bisons were getting within a basket, and uh, right now they're, they're facing a deficit, a larger deficit than uh, two, two points. Sandy McLean coming in for Reggie Tiller for the Trojans. Again, the uh, the buzzer was not being heard by the officials. 
for that substitution to be made. 77-69, we've got a little bit less than five minutes left to play in the game, and good steal. Pax blocked by Cottle, nice job in the ball game for Lipscomb right now. Cottle, Taylor, Hutchison, uh, Anthony Jones and Martello all in, and a foul called underneath. It'll be on number 34, Stacy Mason, and another Trojan forward in a little bit of foul trouble. That's the third foul on Mason. Scott Heiser playing with four fouls, and Mac Heberlin also has three for the Trojans, and that is the front line, basically, of the Trojans. Without the bench depth of the Bisons, um, they have to play with those guys, and they, if they foul out, the Bisons will have a much easier time of things. First shot good by Martello. In the game for the Trojans, McLean, Patton, Heiser, uh, Brooks, and Mason. So those are the men on the floor right now. Martello. 77-71 score. Excuse me, Steve. Martello makes it 15 for his uh, points on the night. McLean with the ball on the outside. Again, those three guards are working the ball on the outside. And most of the points scored by the Trojans have been by those guards on the outside for the second half. Scott Heiser with the ball inside. Again, Scott's got four fouls, so he's in, in trouble. McLean almost got that ball stolen, but he found Heiser on the way down to the floor. 15 seconds on the shot clock. Four minutes on the game clock. 71, or check it, 77, 71. The and shot Trojans clock says seven. New clock, but Trojans score on the rebound by Mason. 79-71, the Trojans like to see that clock ticking with 3.50 on the game clock and an eight point lead. But that is a lot of time with three point shots like that. 79-74, a five point lead. And I'm a little hollering by the officials. We can't hear it from up here. I think he made a warning to the Bisons for handling the ball after the basket. They uh, caused the ball to go out of bounds and sort of out of play, out of control. It, by doing that, they're giving themselves more time to set up on defense. That is why the need is there for the warning. Missed uh, pass by Patton. Martello comes up with it. Bisons working down the floor. The Bisons have not used their bench as much in this game as they usually do. Martello goes up well and is called for a charge. Offensive foul, I believe. We'll see. The basket will count. The basket does count. And uh, it'll be a one and one. After the shot was the foul, the Trojans will have a one and one opportunity. Charles Brooks draw, draws the foul for the Trojans. That was the third foul on Martello. Charles Brooks, the 80% shooter from the line. 79.64, if you want to be more exact, on the regular season. <laughs> Martello's got uh, 14 points on the night. We take a look at Brooks. He shoots in the 70s as far as percentage from the free throw line. And the first one just falls after bouncing around. Brooks putting the Trojans up by four once again, looking for a way to get him up by five with 3.13 left to go. Lots of time left in this contest. A little bit of shifting around going on around the lane. We'll see what's happening here. One of the Official. officials wanting a spot cleaned up on the floor. Coke has been spilled out of bounds. 80-76, the score. 3.13 left to play in the ball game. As you see, both teams in the bonus as far as fouls are concerned. And as they finish cleaning things up, they'll line it up again and shoot the second of the one and one. Charles Brooks on the line. Right now, the Trojans do have a lead, but Steve, the ball game is either way. It can go either way. Uh, we'll just have to wait it out for three minutes according to the game clock. This is life or death. 
elimination for the loser. That's right. It does not matter what these two teams have done to each other uh, during this season. This is do or die. Lipscomb would sure like to make a second trip to the national tournament two years in a row here. The Trojans have never been there. They have never seen Kansas City. They don't know what it looks like. <laughs> but they want to go this year. Now the Trojans have won in semifinal action, but they have they have never won a final in District 24 champion. That is correct. They went to Lincoln Memorial to play a District 24 final game, and that was, I believe, 1983 uh, when they went there. They lost to Lincoln Memorial in that final, which is their only opportunity that they have had. That's the furthest they've ever gotten as far as a chance to advance to Kansas City. This year looks pretty good for them if they can pull this off because Lincoln Memorial would have to come over here to Trojan Fieldhouse. But well, Steve, uh, the officials have done a good job of making Charles Brooks think about his second attempt, but he makes it. 81-76, 313 left to play. They're also resting some weary legs on the floor right now as these players have played an awful lot of minutes. Both first strings still in. What a move, what a move. Martello Allie. receiving the feed from Richard Taylor. Martello having 19 points. He's been the factor during the second half. He's the one who's kept the Bisons within scoring range uh, from the, these Trojans. Brooks missing that one. Tipped out of bounds and it will go Trojan way. What a break for the Trojans. They're gonna it get a second a chance and they don't deserve it. <laughs> but. Uh, that was a, a bad shot, but they got the ball back. They were even out of position for the rebound. McLean in the lane, no good. Heiser gets around, no. Uh, Patton finally comes up with it, tipped around by Heiser. New shot clock, 2.30 left to go in the ball game. And attempting to foul, Brooks takes it up and puts it through. Five point Trojan lead, 83-78. 2.20 left to go in the game. Both teams have switched to a man-to-man -man defense, which is a good move on both coaches' parts. For Taylor three for points. three, no good. Trojans uh, come up with it. Pass off inside. Charles Brooks goes up and is fouled hard by Martello. Nice. I'm sorry, Carl. That should be number four. I believe let's, you're right. Let's look at that and uh, see. Martello, they're committing that foul, but a lot of beautiful offensive passing by the Trojans. I have to say again, Carl, I've said it in the earlier games that we've covered of these Trojans, I have never seen an offense move the ball any better. Uh, all three guards just dishing it off to each other. It's almost like they're saying, you can try it. No, you can try it. No, you can try it. We've got a little bit of mix up here on the floor. What we've got is uh, some of the Lipscomb fans have fall, uh, thrown some things on the floor. So what we've got are the police officers kind of scoping out the crowd, trying to, uh, to maintain some order here. The officials have got both coaches uh, at the scorer's table. On the left of the official, you see Coach Don Meyer. And the announcer right now asking for a little bit of sportsmanship. The winner of tonight's contest, once again, will play the winner of Lincoln Memorial and Lee College from East Tennessee. Charles Brooks goes to the line to shoot two. 83-78, Trojans up by five with a, a uh, two minutes and one second time remaining on the clock. Brooks hits the first. 18 points for Brooks, consistent. He's uh, shooting 76 for the season. Two minutes left to play, 84, 78 Trojans on top. Brooks makes his second, 85, 78. Again, and both teams with the man-to-man -man defense. The, that should have been out of bounds. I can't believe they didn't call that ball out of bounds. It went off the top of the backboard. And that's an automatic out of bounds. Right now we have a timeout on the floor. 
With the score 85 to 80, the Bison's called timeout. We'll be back to fi finish this ball game right after this. Didn't that ball go off the back, top of the backboard, Carl? I'm not sure, but Heiser came up with the rebound, and, and Heiser and Mason have both been coming up with the rebounds and then losing it. They've been knocked yep. out of their hands. Bisons are looking real good uh, defensively on, that, on the rebounds. Sure are. They've been playing some tough defense. 85-80 for the closed circuit viewers. 146 left to play. What a ball game. Look at the crowd and see what you're missing by not being in the gym. I'll tell you what you're not missing is 100 degree weather. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, coming back on the court, counting down. Five, four, three, two, one. We're back once again with 146 left to go in the second round, or you could call it semifinals of the District 24 tournament. Trevecca Trojans up by five, and uh, they will get the ball right now for the inbounds pass. And we've seen this move before, the full court press. The Bisons are gonna try to keep the Trojans from uh, being able to get the ball down the floor, they're gonna try to create some turnovers and it, cause the Trojans <laughs> to lose the ball like that. Uh, I, th I saw that ball off of the foot of one of the Bisons, I thought, but it's called out off of the Trojans. Well, the Bisons are doing exactly what they did in McQuitty Gym the last time these teams met. They played a very tight full court press on the inbound and caused the Trojans to choke. And again, we're seeing the Trojans have to deal with this pressure trying to inbound the ball. 85-82, Richard Taylor scoring two. Trojans get the ball inbounds before a timeout can be called. Avery Patton works it across midcourt as the Trojans will work the ball around and try to get fouled here. They'll, they will do that. They've got... Uh, a three-point lead, which can be caught up with a Martello or a Taylor three-point shot. Number 20, Greg Cottle with a hard swat on the inside. One and one is the call. Fans not liking that. They were looking for that. That was called on uh, Matt. Excuse me, Philip Hutchison. Apparently, uh, the foul called before Cottle came in with the with his arm there, but. And I believe that's why it is one and one. If the foul, if the foul would have been called on Cottle, it would have been two. Heiser from the line. Pressure is on. Heiser showing some cool. The junior out of Kentucky. 6'5", forward from Louisville. And Heiser seeing how much ice he has in his veins, he hits that one. Again, we're seeing almost what happened last time in McQuitty Gym. Heiser hitting crucial free throws. Three-point shot taken by the Bisons, 87-85. Two-point difference right now in the contest. We're gonna take another break. 87-85 to score with 54 seconds left to go. We'll come back and keep it right here to the finish. Can you make it? <laughs> it's a home dinner. <laughs> All right. Okay, teams coming back on the floor. Countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. And hey, welcome back to Trojan Fieldhouse. 54 seconds left to go, and we've got a contest. 87-85, life or death. Trojans have a two-point lead right now, but they've also got to work with a full-court press as these Bisons can play some tough full-court basketball. That's exactly why we saw Coach Don Meyer call that timeout to give his, time, uh, his team time enough to set up that press. Again, the Trojans trying to get that ball across the timeline, and... There's a foul. Avery Patton will go to the line. Cottle committing the foul, and I believe 
I believe that's his fourth. No? Okay. Foul number 20, Greg Cottle of the Bisons, his second. His I was second. wrong. That was his second foul. Way off. Okay. To the line will go Avery Patton with a two-point Trojan lead. Trojans. This is a, this is a crucial free throw for the Trojans. Avery Patton going to the line. The senior guard conference player of the year. If that puts any more added pressure on him. And he hits. How many games can the Trojans pull this out against the Bisons like this? One, I don't know. You've got to think that they're going to choke under this kind of pressure sooner or later. Avery Patton taking that deep breath, concentrating. Nothing but rim and backboard. Let's see. And he must, misses the second, but a traveling call. No. They let him get by with that because he bounced the ball as he was sliding across the floor. Beautiful job by Martello to bounce the ball. Three-point attempt, no good. And rebound by McLean. McLean trying to work out of a tough situation and a foul called on Anthony Jones. 30 seconds left to play in the ball game. 88-85. Again, foul called on Jones. Sandy McLean will go to the line. The Sandman, they call him. Uh, he's probably not enjoying this pressure right now. Uh, he's out of our screen. He's over toward half court trying to relax. Trojans remain with a three-point lead, 88-85. 30 seconds. 30 seconds plus whatever it takes for timeouts. That's what we've got. One and one opportunity for McLean. Sandy short with his shot. Rebound by Martello. And the Trojans will have to set up and try to hold the Bisons right here. Shot clock is turned off, three point, and it hits. We have a tie ball game, 88-88, 17 seconds left to play, and the Bisons have called a timeout. Oh, what a ball game, Steve. What it comes down to, Carl, it's gonna come down to the last shot. Trojans are gonna bring that ball down the floor, and they're going to wait until the clock's gonna run out. But of course, first they have to beat the full court press of the Bisons. And that's exactly why head coach Don Meyer has called this timeout. Again, he is gonna set up his team with that full court press on the inbound, make them cough up that ball. Uh, we'll probably see them look, look for uh, maybe Scott Heiser or maybe uh, Stacy Mason, one of the other guys who haven't been to the free throw line as yet and they will foul them immediately, or they will allow uh, the Trojans to try to bring that ball down. Now we uh, will be talking overtime here shortly, 17 seconds left to play. And Steve, uh, how do they play out the overtime in TCA, uh, AC, uh, District 24 champion uh, tournament play? Well, they'll go with a five minute overtime period, and whoever's ahead at the end of the five minutes, uh, they get it, but if it's tied again, they keep going until someone wins a five minute overtime period. What a ball game. <laughs> gotta, gotta have a winner. Someone's gotta face Lincoln Memorial or Lee. The Bisons, once again, they were in this same situation. Last, uh, a week ago Thursday, when okay. they were against Union. Steve, what we're seeing is the Bisons dropping back and allowing the Trojans to attempt that last shot. Gutsy move by Coach Don Meyer. We'll see what happens. Sandy McLean on top of the key. He wants it. We get a foul called. No foul called. The ball is turned over. Five seconds left to play in the ball game. Charles Brooks kicked the ball out of bounds, and the Bisons will inbound it with five seconds left to play. We're going to have a timeout called by the Trojans. Five seconds left to play, and we're going to keep it here. 88-88. This gym as in an uproar, mostly from the Bison fans. The Trojans are watching, the Trojan fans are watching that clock. They realize they've got five seconds left to play. Uh, we probably will see an overtime situation here, providing the Trojans can maintain good defense. On the inbound pass, you can watch Anthony Jones, number 22. You can watch Chris Martello, number 40. They'll be the men, I believe, that will be counted on in this situation. Anthony Jones has been uh, held in check quite a bit by the Trojans most of the night. And as we take looks at the crowd and everything, players returning to the floor, 
The Trojans will have to play some tough defense if they hope to stop the Bisons now. Five seconds, and it's either the Bisons will get it or we're going to overtime. And the possibilities, the potential exists for a foul. If a foul is committed, we have free throws to be taken. The, uh, three, two, one, shot taken up, no good. The buzzer sounds. We're going into overtime. Hey, why not? There's plenty of people here. We've got some more time this evening. Let's play another five minutes. Sure, why not? 88-88, the score. We'll take a timeout right now. We'll be back with overtime right after this. And uh, it's whoever emerges on top after five minutes of play. And it'll be Charles Brooks up against Martello. Mac Heberlin wants to be put in the ball game. Heberlin's coming in in place of Stacy Mason because he's going to jump against Martello, I believe. Yeah, that's the way the that's the way Coach Frank Wilson dealt it. And we've got uh, Mason on the bench, Heberlin for the jump. Five minutes of play, almost a new ball game. What a fitting way for this game to end. These two teams both. Very worthy opponents, 12th and 16th in the nation, defending NAIA champions against the upstart Trojans. I don't know if you call them upstart or not, <laughs> but uh, definitely have come on this year to play some outstanding basketball. Scores table getting ready, and we've got an overtime. Scott Heiser comes up with it, and the first shot, Sandy McLean wide open in the lane. Trojans lead by two. Hutchison almost loses it, gets it back, back out to Cottle. And Hutchison inside working against Heberlin. Hutchison uh, coming back around after being quiet for quite a while. And Coach Wilson didn't like the way uh, Mac Heberlin played that when he's gonna send Stacy Mason back into the ball game. Charles Brooks gets fouled on Anthony Jones. Uh, and he's also being harassed a little bit. Anthony Jones being harassed by Avery Patton. Not very nice. And Anthony Jones uh, fouls out of the ball game with that foul. Jones will go out. Henry will come in. And Anthony Jones, fantastic player. The senior, senior guard, uh, all District 24, all v TCAC conference player. Just well, an outstanding player. 21 points on the night, he had two rebounds. Uh, and he sits down, kind of uh, frustrated that he's not able to finish out the ball game, but he contributed. And if this game ends here, so does his career. So kind of a disappointing finish. Charles Brooks misses the free throw. Game tied at 90s. Bison's with the ball. 4.15 to play in the overtime. Again, if the score remains tied after the five minute play, we go again. Martello on the inside. And a foul on Philip Hutchison, reaching over Sandy McLean. McLean will go to the line, and again, McLean shooting well at 75%. That should be the fourth on Hutchinson. And to the line, McLean. Sandy McLean will be at the free throw line for the Trojans, shooting one and one. Trojans need to take advantage of these foul shots. Sandy McLean, 75% from the line. Little conference going on between the officials and the scorer's table. Again, Mc McLean getting some time to think about it. Coming in the ball game, Bob Ford. He will replace Henry. Now, as far as fouls are concerned, Steve, uh, Hutchinson and Martello for David Lipscomb have four fouls. And uh, Scott Heiser is the Trojan with uh, four fouls. Stacy Mason having three. Heiser playing all the second half with almost all of it with four fouls. Very early on, he picked up his fourth foul, and he's at least 15 minutes now. He's played 
with the four fouls and uh, stayed out of the situation of getting that fifth one. Four minutes and one second and a one point Trojan lead, 91 to 90. 26 points for Sandy McLean. Does and not fall, and that uh, missing those free throws are going to haunt the Trojans when Lipscomb brings the ball down. And uh, if they make a three-point shot, that, that puts them in a two-basket lead. What that means is tougher D needed by the Trojans. Inside. Bob Ford, no good, and Scott Heiser. Good aggressive rebound by Heiser, risking a foul. But it comes down with the ball. McLean bringing it to Patton. The little general will set up that three-guard offense. Patton for three. Does not fall. And back the out. Belgians get a new clock and the ball back. 321 left to go in the game. 91-90. Oh, what a ball game, Steve. It's exciting. <laughs> game that started almost two hours ago now. Three points, Sandy McLean. Two points, I'm sorry, they only gave him two on that. 93-90. Three minutes left to play. And again, look for the Bisons to attempt three-point shots. They're also looking to work it inside. They want to hit Martello or Bob Ford or Hutchison on the baseline. They've got some big men in there right now. Watch Hutchison, Hutchison. Back to Taylor. Taylor can shoot from three. He doesn't. But Cottle decides he's gutsy. The Trojans come up. No. The Trojans lose the ball. And a blocking foul called on Avery Patton. That's Avery's third. That will send Taylor to the line. See if we can get a percentage on Taylor. Taylor shoots 53 for the season from the line. Taylor. 93-90, Taylor trying to cut the Trojan lead to two. And he doesn't make it. Oh my goodness. 2.25 left to play in the ball game during this five minute overtime period. Avery Patton slowing things down to a crawl here, setting up the guard def uh, offense for the Trojans. The Bisons being patient on defense as well. McLean going to the basket, does not fall. Again, 93-90, two minutes left to play in the ball game. Hutchison. Hutchison inside. Cuts Trojans. the lead to only one. 93-92. Hutchinson has 26 points. What a ball game that young man has played. He's a freshman. No timeouts called yet in the overtime period. Both teams showing a lot of fatigue. They've been going for two hours now. And Coach Frank Wilson is saying call timeout. He's encouraging his guys to do it. Oh, what a shot. Off balance from the side. McLean shoots. 30 points for Sandy McLean. Three point a shot by Henry. We've got a tie ball game. 95 apiece. One minute left to play in the ball game. 44 seconds on the, on the shot clock as we see Avery Patton bringing it down. And we're gonna, again, see the Trojans try to be patient. They need to make this basket. This well, is I tell a you, crucial basket. What ha whatever happens, it'll be the Bisons with the opportunity to hit the last shot. We're under 45 seconds, 40. Timeout called by the Trojans. 23 seconds on the shot clock. Trojans gonna talk it over. And, uh, wow. <laughs> I don't I don't have any more expletives to use. <laughs> Can you say that backwards? No. <laughs> oh, it's just been one great ball game. Taking a look inside at the uh, Bison bench again, the discipline that's exercised uh, by the entire team. For a timeout, they do it for every timeout. They bring the chairs out onto the court. 
away from the fans, away from other distractions, and they concentrate on basketball. There you look at the scoreboard. There it is for yourself, 40 seconds, 95s. And uh, the fans are in this ballgame. The fans are worn out. It's got to be 350 degrees in here Fahrenheit. <laughs> uh, oh, just a very hot ball game in more ways than one. That's for sure. The officials breaking up the huddles. We'll see the teams come back on. Again, the Trojans taking that timeout with 23 seconds left on the shot clock, and they will inbound the ball. Teams making their way. Bison, Bison setting up on defense. Trojans setting up for the inbound pass. 38 seconds and counting, 20 on the shot clock. Bison's giving Trojans plenty of room. They're going to allow them to attempt the shot, knowing that they will get the last shot. 12 on the shot clock. Heiser on top, Avery on top, and he'll shoot for three. Does not fall. Does not fall. 19 seconds left to play in the ball game. The score is tied. The Bisons will get the last shot. And coach is telling the players for the Trojans to stay back. Good steal attempt from Avery Patton. The ball goes out of bounds. Last touch by Patton. Five seconds left to play. I've seen this before, Steve. <laughs> I've seen it you before. You know, that same time looks familiar. That's for sure. Last time, the Bisons inbounded the ball with five and couldn't get the shot off. Uh, or they got one off, it wasn't any good. Right now, the Bison's calling a timeout. We're gonna take a break with five seconds left, 95 apiece, and we're back to see if we take another overtime or if the Bison's can win it here. We'll be back right after this. Okay, team's coming back on the floor countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. Back at Trojan Fieldhouse, Steve Perry with you along with Carl East. And we are coming down to the end or maybe to the beginning. It's the end of the game or the beginning of another overtime. But whatever it is, we've got an exciting finish left. Five seconds left to go, 95, 95. Let's see what happens, Steve. Four, three, and a steal by Brooks, and the ball goes out of bound, but the, ha the overtime is over. The overtime is over, 95 apiece. We've got another overtime yet to come. And both teams will take basically the same thing as a timeout. Now, both teams in overtime have one timeout, and uh, as you saw, the Trojans chose to use theirs a little earlier. Uh, trying to get the last shot, they missed it. Little General Avery Patton taking it up and missing to the right of the basket. Then Lipscomb takes the ball down, trying to wait for the last shot. The shot knocked out of bounds with a pass by Avery Patton. After Patton knocked the ball out of bounds, uh, another pass inbounds with five seconds left, and Charles Brooks knocked it out as it was going down to Taylor. And uh, so we try again, five minutes for another overtime period. Score. 95-95. And once again, we might mention that David Lipscomb beat Union University 198 on a last second shot. And that was all a week ago Thursday to get here. The Trojans got here with a 101 to 74, a relatively easy win over Bethel College in the opening round of District 24 action. Here in semifinal round, they are both fighting to meet the one school that wins from the east side of the state of Tennessee, either Lincoln Memorial or Lee College. So uh, we'll tip it off again, Mac Heberlin and uh, Darren Henry for a change instead of Chris Martello will be jumping. And neither guy, oh, uh, Trojans come up with it. Sandy McLean once again taking the opening drive down, but this time he misses. <laughs> 
He's rushing those shots. He's taken a whole lot of shots tonight. And that might explain why he's got 30 points, because he has nailed several of them. Uh, but he's missed several from that inside lane and also from uh, about 15 on the outside. That one partially falling. blocked by Avery Patton as he got a piece of the ball on the way up. Good defense by Patton. And it was tipped, so it will be Bison ball. And Cottle will inbound the ball for the Bisons. The ball knocked out of bounds by Mac Heberlin. So we'll try it again. Two seconds stick off the clock. The Trojans now showing a lot of pressure on the inbound. They're yeah, working hard, see. and a man wide open in back is Taylor. Pass coming in towards. Good Taylor. inside pass to Hutchinson for two. 97-95, Bisons on top. Nice offensive work by the Bisons. 28 points for Hutchinson, by the way. Brooks on the outside. Again, those guards. Heiser on the outside. Goes back to Patton. For three. And he hits. How much confidence do you have to have to hit a three-pointer in overtime down by two points? Avery Patton, 98-97 the score. 26 points for Patton, Fifth, or check that, 98-97, one-point ball game. Trojans on top, and we're looking at the Bisons move the ball in, uh, being very patient. All kinds of stuff happening on the inside. Henry for two, no good, Patton rebounds. Nobody underneath to get that rebound. The Bisons need to keep a, somebody on the inside to get that rebound on those outside shots. Uh, the Trojans will go ahead and uh, see if they can't capitalize on this situation. Again, 98-97, Trojans well, by one. Things are quieting down here in Trojan Fieldhouse. It's because everyone's getting hoarse. The fans are worn out. Inside, Heberlin. And Heberlin takes it up with Henry floating in the air and draws the foul. Good move by Heberlin. A little bit of experience shown there by the junior. Now Heberlin will go to the line. That was a good play by Henry, though. Um, excuse me, Carl, because it was a sure two points for Heberlin. 72% for the season. Again, Heberlin been struggling this latter part of the season. He had a great game uh, against Bethel last week. But uh, let's see how he does from the free throw line. Does not fall. Misses. But it will be a... Uh, Mack only having two points on the night tonight. It being a two-shot foul, he gets another chance. And, and he hits it. Makes it 98-97, 99-97, two-point Trojan lead. Mason in the ballgame. Heberlin takes a seat. Heberlin really struggling, not having uh, very much success tonight. Back to 3.16 on the shot clock. We're counting it down for the fourth time tonight. Still working the ball around. Hutchison with it. He's looking for an open man. Taylor inside to Ford. Ford Good goes up, shot, shot blocked. Casey Mason, look for that drive. Sandy McLean into Heiser, back out. McLean just tired. Avery Patton was trying to get the ball back outside to McLean, and he had to wait because McLean wasn't paying attention. You have to wonder if these Trojans can keep coming up with these shots. 102-97, Trojans break the century mark on that three-pointer by Avery Patton. 29 points for the little general. Very consistent with his average, and good block by Sandy McLean. What a block. I don't know where that came from. We've got to hurt Avery Patton. He's still up, but he's limping. And the officials, officials calling timeout. Time out. Avery Patton having a few choice words with some Bisons. Uh, the official calling injury timeout. Patton will uh, go toward the bench and have the trainer look at it. Both teams going to the bench. Uh, there's a look at Patton kind of grimacing in pain. I don't think it'll take much for that ankle to get back into shape, though. Adrenaline will have a lot to do with that. Well, the scoreboard says 102 to 97. 
Trojans on top, 2.06 left to play in the second overtime. The teams are all together on the, like they're in huddles. Uh, 2.06 on the clock, 38 on the shot clock. Patton will stay in the ball game. The officials trying to avoid calling too many fouls. Um, they want to see this game played and, and only call fouls near the ball, so Patton able to keep playing, but no foul called on uh, the last the play that injured him. Well, Steve, we talk a lot about uh, bad officiating. When officials make a bad call, we always hear about it. And uh, we even focus on it. But the officials have made good calls basically throughout the night as we see a foul called here. It's number 20, Greg Cottle picking up his third personal. To the line will be Sandy McLean. 102-97, Trojans by five. Darren Henry will replace Bob Ford. Once again, Anthony Jones out of the lineup. Uh, 102-97, Trojans looking to increase the lead, but a one-and-one -one opportunity. And uh, he gets it to fall, but gets the roll. So Trojans pick up another point, 150 on the clock, 103-97. Trojans with a little bit of a lead here, but uh, no lead is ever enough when you can bomb three-pointers like the Bisons can, 42%. That is for sure, especially with a little less than two minutes left to play in the ball game. Plenty of time. And he misses six-point lead. The Trojans left. They didn't even go for the rebound. The Trojans are wanting to set, set up on defense very quickly. Lots of pushing and shoving going, in, going on on the inside. Scott Heiser with some pushing. Rebound by McLean. McLean has been awesome in the last few overtimes we've had. The last few minutes of the ball game and then uh, during both overtimes, McLean has been getting the rebounds. A steal. And a foul, foul called. It looks like it'll be on Sandy McLean. Reaching in on McLean. And well, statisticians, that only, that's only two for Sandy. It'll be a one and one. A to the line, number 20, Greg Cottle. Third foul on the Trojan, Sandy McLean. Stopping the... Easy, fast break. And a timeout called. I believe Trojan's calling that timeout. Uh, 103.97, and Carl East assures me that it was the Trojans. So that means Trojans are out of timeouts. The Bisons have their timeouts right here. This is what they call the Circle K spell off. They spell the Trojans. It's kind of exciting to. Uh, to watch sometimes. Once again, 122 left to play. And a little bit of annex being done by the uh, Circle K spell off. Circle K is a service club here on the campus of Trevecca Nazarene College uh, and strong supporters of the Trevecca Trojans. 103-97, 122, and we'll see the Bisons on the line. Circle K also a branch of Kiwanis International, the college branch of that. 103-97, to the line, Greg Cottle, 122 on the clock, Mac Heberlin in the ball game. Stacy Mason will come out. That's for the Trojans. Um, now Greg he went in for the hike and rebounding. Trojans hoping the pressure uh, affects Cottle here. They'd love to keep a six-point lead, but don't count out the Bisons right here. Cottle shoots 85%, Steve. He's been consistent all season long, but he doesn't make that one. And sure enough, Mac Heberlin comes up with a rebound. Trojans are gonna work it down the court. And a reach in, not called as a foul. Trojans working the ball around. And an obvious foul as... That should be two. Charles Brooks is run over. And the foul being called on number 20, Greg Cottle is his fourth. 
One and one is called. I said it should have been called two, and I still say it should have been called two. That was an assault. <laughs> that was an assault. That was an assault. But, we ran him uh, right over. No officials, question. The officials have done good all, all game. Let's, you know, I guess they deserve a couple of bad calls. Well, that's one of those judgment calls. Very, very difficult to decide one way or the other. 103.97, 105 left in the contest, and Trevecca sends one of their top free throw shooters to the line. 104.97, Trojans beginning to take, uh, well, you we may call it command. They've got a comfortable cushion, if anything is comfortable. The second one doesn't Again, fall. the Trojans are not able to shoot, to, to sink that second free throw, and that's going to haunt them. Ball from the outside for three, and hits. Oh, no. Taylor hits and timeout called by the Bisons. 104 to 100. And these teams, I don't know if they're going for a scoring record or what, but uh, they're getting up there. Well, you got to remember, we're into two overtimes. Now we again see Coach Don Meyer call timeout. Uh, again, 104, 100, 55 seconds left to play. And the reason why he called the timeout is again to get the uh, Bisons to set up their full court press, their inbound press that's been effective and has worked for them all season long. Well, he also knows there's a four point difference, 55 seconds on the clock, 45 second shot clock in NAIA basketball. If the Trojans get the ball in and work it around, then they will try to take the last shot. The Bisons will be forced to foul, and uh, with only one shot, the Bisons could not win this ball game. One hundred four, one hundred, coming back to the floor now. The two teams, and definitely the fouling team in right now for the Bisons. This is how it works: Bodie, Tomlinson, Clanton, uh, Ford. And Taylor, all in, all people who can foul and get away with it. Uh, some guys in for the first time. Bodie hasn't been in all ball game. So if they can foul, uh, it won't. If they foul, that doesn't, they don't foul out of the ball game, and they did. Sandy McLean will go to the line. Foul called on Bodie. A blocking foul, one and one. 53 seconds on the clock. Just two seconds ticked off during that uh, inbound. And we'll see. Number 14 of the Bison's Marcus we'll, Bodie. We'll see Sandy first. go to the line. Now, Steve, Sandy McLean, the, line the past few times that Sandy's been to the line, he's made his first one miss the second one. So I don't know whether this will be a pattern here, but we'll, we'll keep an eye on Sandy. He's got 31 points on the night. Definitely, this is a very important free throw if any of them are. Again, the officials uh, conferencing with Coach Don Meyer, again giving time for Sandy McLean to think about it. And we've got some talking going on. I'm not sure exactly what it's all about. Uh, we don't have direct communication with the scorer's table uh, or the officials. It'd be nice if we could have some microphones that they could explain it to us. But right now you see Sandy McLean in the corner of your picture. He's thinking about it. All oh, the added pressure that uh, officials can sometimes cause. Both coaches were talking to the officials about how the teams have been trying, uh, they've been touching the ball after the basket. And I believe that's what they were discussing. They were instructing the coaches to make sure that, that both teams leave the ball alone on the basket. One Sandy makes that one. 105-100, five-point Trojan lead. Sandy McLean with a chance to pull the Trojans ahead by six right here. He does. Six-point Trojan lead, clock running at 50. Three-point, no, two-point attempt. And Taylor holds it up. Back to Clanton who loses it. Clanton's gonna come in, go for three. Three does not fall. Two points by Hutchison is good. Hutchison on the inside. And the Trojans wanting to work it down right here. Intentional foul. That is an intentional foul on Darren Henry. A two-shot foul will be called, and the Trojans will get the ball. 
20 seconds, 27 seconds left. 106, 102. That was the third foul on Darren Henry. The Trojans waiting to call a huddle here at the top of the key. The Trojan fans are feeling it. 27 seconds left to play in the ball game. 106, 102. Sandy uh, has been consistent. He's made some. It'll be a two-shot foul. That was really a nece necessary foul. They had to stop the clock. That's right. The clock shot is already gone. That's right. And they had to foul in order to get the ball back. Five points. The Sandman McLean, 34 points on the night. And he uh, does a little prayer on the line. And he sinks it. Six points again, 108, 102. We may be seeing uh, the last hurrah. The shot off. Charles Brooks comes out, a one and one. Darren Henry commits another foul. 19 seconds left. Trojan fans get up as you can see the players directing the crowd reaction. High five, Scott Heiser, Sandy McLean, Mac Heberlin. What, what a, a big contest. Game. What a big game. 19 seconds left. 108, 102. Now the Trojan fans feel a victory. We don't want to say that this game is over. By all means, no. But right now, the momentum is going the Trojan way. We see Brooks go to the line. One and one. No timeouts. 108, 102. Brooks makes 109, 102. And uh, in this ball game, you have to hand it to the Bisons. What a game they have played. Uh, what a fantastic team they are. 110, 102, 18, 17. Trojans will pick up a turnover. The Trojans get the ball back and a foul called, a two-shot foul on Taylor. 12 seconds Brooks. left. Charles Brooks was wide open for the long post pattern. The Trojans are celebrating at center court. The fans are going bananas here in Trojan Fieldhouse. All of a sudden, it's just not as hot as it was earlier. I don't know whether it's all the jumping down and the waving of arms, but it seems a little cooler than it was 10 minutes ago. 12 seconds left, 110, 102. The Trojan players are celebrating. You see Avery Patton and Charles Brooks there as we take a look at McLean, and he hits it. 111-102, and what a ball game, that's all I can say. I, I just don't know what else to say. These two teams have played their hearts out. This Bison team, defending national champions, about to be eliminated in district play. Five, four, three, and... It looks like a foul has been committed. Foul on number 31, Matt Keberlin. Count the basket. 112, 104. Three seconds left. Some of the team members celebrating with the fans. Sandy McLean now trying to get the fans off the floor. Oh, the Trojans taste it. Three seconds left. And uh, the Bisons will go to the line. We'll see. You've got to hand it to the seniors from David Lipscomb. We want to give them some credit. Anthony Jones, Bob Ford, Richard Taylor, Eldridge Mayberry, uh, Chris Martello. Seniors who have spent a career at David Lipscomb, which has involved a massive amount of wins, very few losses, a national championship. The ball game is over. Trevecca advances, David Lipscomb goes home disappointed. But what a ball game. Once again, the final score, 112 to 106. A six point Trojan victory. The number 12 team over the 16th ranked team in the nation. We'll be back with a wrap up of tonight's ball game uh, right after this.
Welcome back to Trojan Fieldhouse in a somewhat excited ball game. 112, 106. Semi-final action, the Trojans come on top over David Lipscomb. We find a, a gentleman standing beside me who had uh, one of the biggest parts in the ball game. 37 points. Did you count them, Sandy? No, I didn't. I think I was <laughs> second overtime. I, I tell you, uh, we had two overtimes. What did Coach say to you guys during the overtime timeouts? Well, uh, he didn't really have to say anything. We knew that we had to suck it up. We knew that, and uh, it was just a matter of keeping our composure and playing good ball. You guys kept your composure, and that was, that was the whole point of winning the ball game. Reflecting back to the first half, the Bisons played very solid. Hutchinson was really tough inside. The guards, you guys couldn't hit on the outside. Was there anything that you talked about as a team in, in uh, the locker room during halftime? Um, well, we talked about, um, I came out and I was pretty hot, and they ran to like a box and one on me. And then um, we were getting the shots, but we, we should have brought it in closer, you know, and let the big guys get fouls on Hutchison and Martella. So during the second half, you guys obviously, especially Avery Patton, decided yeah. that you're going to start hit, hitting those outside shots, becoming hot, and Sandy did a fantastic job for the Trojans. I want to congratulate you and enjoy. Good luck in the, in the finals on later on. Steve, back in with me. We're going to check out the... Uh, the stats for this ball game and what a ball game it was. Uh, either team could have won the ball game all the way through two overtimes, and this gym has gotten the hottest it's ever been uh, that I know of. It was uh, uh, quite a quite a ball game after after three meetings earlier this season for the Trojans. Uh, this one just the best of all of them. Two overtimes. Um, you never knew when it, when it was going to end or which way. I'm telling you, a fantastic ball game. And let's sum up this, the scores real quick. Uh, for the Bisons, the top scorer, Philip Hutchinson with 30, uh, 34. Chris Martello and Anthony Jones, both outstanding performances with 21 points apiece. Uh, Philip Hutchinson, of course, will be coming back. Jones and Martello, seniors, a disappointing loss for him. That ends the season, but, uh, oh, they played outstanding. They played a good game, and there's nothing to be ashamed of. The David Lipscomb team... Uh, is an outstanding team, will always be, and uh, congratulations to Coach Don Meyer and the entire team for the performance that they displayed during the entire season. Now with the Trojans, Sandy McLean, 37 points. Three points short of the uh, all-time high scoring uh, record for the Trojans. Uh, Avery Patton having 29. Avery only had seven points during the whole first half. He exploded during the second half and got 29. Uh, Charles Brooks with 23. Those three guards they will continue to be the secret to the winning formula for these Trevecca Trojans. They will, and I think down the line it'll even be harder for teams that haven't faced the Trojans all year. They don't know what to expect. The Lipscomb came in tonight, they had prepared for three guards to be in this ball game and to be in control, and they knew that's what they had to stop. And of course, on down the line, Lincoln Memorial has played the Trojans very early in the season once. But it's been a long time, you can forget. And uh, I'm sure that they will get a surprise that this Trojan team has now won uh, 17 or 18 in a row. I'm not sure exactly. Whatever it is, it's continuing to up the school record. So uh, it's, we'll have to see what happens down the line. But they did just what we said they had to do the second half. They cut down Hutchison's performance, and Avery Patton came alive. And then Sandy McLean, of course, key free throws, and he hit them all. For sure. Scott Heiser also played a little bit of part in there with the key free throws, and the free throws have really helped the Trojans stay within these ball games. They've been practicing uh, throughout the season because, again, as we talk about so many times, the Trojans are a weak free-throwing uh, team as a whole. Toward the end of the season, though, they've really been tightening up on that working out, and uh, well, we'll see them in the finals uh, next week with either Lincoln Memorial or Lee College, depending on who wins in tonight's uh, action over there. Actually, Carl, that's going to be a doubleheader. It'll be shown after this ball game right here on TV 61 this week. Of course, these games pre-taped, so uh, it's, that'll be an exciting finish. 112-106, the final score from Trojan Fieldhouse. I'm Steve Perry for Carl East. Thanks for joining us, and stay with us right here for the continuation, the final game of District 24 basketball. Thank you. 